This is Nate Richardson. This article I'll be reading today, I've compo compiled, is called Exaltation Theory. These are my thoughts alone, not LDS official church doctrine. This is a somewhat less organized <clears throat> lecture or document. But here we go. It's hard to work for God and man at the same time. They both expect you to give so much, but you have to do it. No matter who you are, you must become a good philosopher. That's what apostles are. They explain things with much wisdom. Now, obviously, they're more than that, but this is a big part. I also learned this, that one day... I, we, will have all knowledge and see the negative and positive effects of everything I've done in my life through eternity. Surely the good must overpower the bad, being so much larger if I am to hope for exaltation. This is what I see. The negative I've done and do has its effects. Those are exponential, as one thing affects another. On the other hand, the good works exponential, are exponential as well. I need to do so much good that it overpowers the bad that it fills all existence with so much persuasion, so much gentleness, so much pure love, that it reaches into the far depths of the pain that I've caused and brings divine healing there. I think that this is the only way for a person to enter into exaltation. The place where Jesus Christ's atonement comes in is making you a good person as you apply unto it. This accounts for everything. This accounts for justice. For it's no mere sweeping away of the consequences of your negative actions. This would also have the effect of making a person an eternal judge. the An eternal just judge, that is. This means that a person will have this encompassing good effect. It means that he can be trusted by all of his creations. He may have been born again by the help of the atonement. Indeed, such shall be the case for all who reach exaltation. They are fully pure, powerful, compassionate, and with time as... The, as the as they reach exaltation good has so much an effect flowing out from them that it eliminates all the bad the good having a rever reverberating and exponential and frisbee effect on a person good i don't remember what i meant by frisbee when i wrote that maybe uh maybe i meant boomerang i don't know the good having a uh Good brings more good, like something pulling on another, perhaps like a magnet. Now, there is the question of Jesus. How did he live a perfect life in mortality? He was already purified before he came to this earth. He had already worked out his salvation according to eternal gospel principles. Why would we spurn at the idea of a person having um, proceeded to this status before being born onto this earth? Is it not possible for a person to progress in pre-mortality? Yes, it is. Jesus Christ was one who was able to make it full circle in pre-mortality. He was that gifted. <clears throat> that is why he was who he was. Now, side note, we will go on and talk about being gifted and how you're required to do good with what you have, even if it's a different amount of abilities you have. As long as you do good with what you have, that is taking up your cross. That is following Jesus. Okay? <clears throat> so, that is why he was who he was. That is why he was selected as the engine of God's gospel for us to have, um, for us who have not progressed to the point that he has. God saw that Jesus Christ has progressed full circle in the pre-earth life, and hence he became the first born son of God in the spirit. He was the first of all the spirits under the direction of God to progress full circle, to use intelligence to progress to perfection. Now when I say progress full circle, we're just talking about, what I mean is, he became perfect. He became all-encompassing. He became master. Okay. That is why he was the firstborn in the spirit of God. Is it not... Um, is it now? Is it not written that man was also in the beginning with God? You see, as a man progresses in intelligence and goodness, he is more capable of helping others to progress. It's an eternal understanding that seems to be at home to us, namely that when we find something we love, we always want to share it with others. When we have progressed, 
we will seek to aid others in their progression above all else. Now, hear this. Don't hate yourself because you have not yet come full circle like Jesus Christ has. Now, also I would make the note, I'm not suggesting that Jesus, you know, was a prodigal, and I'm not saying that the prodigal doesn't have potential to become a god. What I'm saying is, when I say come full circle, I mean you've mastered yourself. You've reached that attainment. Okay? So when you look at it that way, it's not that big of a deal. You don't have to beat yourself up over past sins either. Okay, we're getting into that here as we go. And that's not to say that you can go off and sin and eat and can be merry. Uh, and for tomorrow we die. But if, we're, if, we, if so be that we're guilty, God will be us with a few stripes and at last we'll be saved in the kingdom of God. That's not it at all. That's a totally wrong mindset. That's a non-working, non-comprehensible plan. Uh, it will not chart you to exaltation. It is ridiculous. Uh, so, But what we're getting at is even... You know, we, okay, Jesus had the abilities. He became a God, okay? We have our certain capacities. We take up our crosses, and we also become a God. If one person is molded with slightly different gifts than another, it doesn't matter if those people reach at the same time, etc. You kind of get the picture we're trying to paint here, okay? This idea that let's read on let's read on don't be angry about how you are not yet a pure stream of good which fills all space by its exponential behavior rather appreciate the experiences you are having and realize that every god in all eternity has gone through breathtakingly similar experiences as you are going through at this present time you have made some mistakes via misuse of your intelligence seeking to jump when you should have waited for more refinement and stability, or perhaps your mistake was in waiting when you should have jumped. Either way, your mistakes are manifestations of holes in your character and understanding with and practice in performance or intelligence, and you must continue onward, correcting your ways, eliminating the ill tendencies in your soul and replacing them, rather, with good tendencies. Gods in all of eternity are carved out of a rough mountainside, and by and by they become smooth or perfect. Okay? So here's another side note. We're not. All we're saying, all that I'm getting at here is that you start as unrefined material and you become refined material. That is the process of exaltation. Okay? You're, okay? Here we go. Those who have already become gods and those who have yielded their, their intelligence to light and submitted their agency unto implied intelligence. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those who have already become gods are those who have yielded their intelligence to light and submitted their agency unto applied intelligence. And I tell you this also, there is nothing more humiliating than an awareness that you have a certain level of intelligence, but that you are not using it. That is a terrible way to live, although it is the way most of us submit to doing I also tell you this key, that is that you need to train yourself to react to different difficult situations and even failures with humility. You need to slow down and stop and think about where you are and how you got there and what you're going to do to bring some goodness to the situation. Now, remember this, despite your errors, you should continue to develop. You can reach the status of Jehovah and Elohim. In other words, you can be a person who is without guilt from all eternity past to all eternity present. I say this because once you have refined yourself to a certain state, you are become an unchangeable thing. You know, uh, <clears throat> no matter what direction you walk in, you will imitate. Yeah, no matter what direction you'll walk in, once you've reached this status, you will emanate or radiate good, perfect good, complete good, perfect justice, perfect understanding, perfect wisdom, everything perfect. You will have become a being who is unable to commit error because of the spirit he is listed to and the laws which govern his creature, making worlds, etc., are only the beginning to exaltation. Exaltation is the realization of every hope your soul has ever known. Now you may ask of this point, well, what if my soul has hoped for, an e for evil in a certain period? Will I get to indulge? No, because your hope for an evil thing was really a hope for a good thing, for humans are only capable of hoping for good things. Every hope for an evil thing is really a hope of a good thing, but seeking to obtain that good thing via corrupt means, usually connotating a shortcut or less skill than the correct way would require. Hope is good. There is no such thing as a bad hope. 
or hope for bad things. When a person does not have hope for good things, he is really not experiencing hope. He's experiencing immaturity and squandered intelligence. He's experiencing a lack of patience and understanding. He's expressing his damnation, or in other words, his unwillingness to progress. His insisting that he receive the reward of justice while not going through the step which leads to such. Now I teach you this. Lucifer in the pre-earth life had not come full circle like Jehovah had. Lucifer had reached a certain point, a high point indeed, and then ceased to be willing to continue in light and truth and intelligence, patience, and all that is required of progressing spirit beings and all their potential. Yes, I tell you, Lucifer shunned at the experience of atonement and was not willing to embrace the eternal truth that a good being slash person loses himself in every sense for the progression of those around him. This is the point where Lucifer fell at the time just before his perfection in full circle. This is why he is such a powerful being. He has much, although not all, intelligence. When I speak of intelligence, pure intelligence, it is of a necessity... It of a necessity constitutes doing the correct thing, not just knowing what the correct thing is. At any rate, I tell you that Lucifer may not have been at almost full circle slash exaltation, though he was high in rank, as we know from scripture. He was lacking in many aspects. In the premortal type life, the more intelligent thing to do was to follow the gospel of God. This is the most pure type of intelligence, that we do what is right. And following the gospel of God, his teachings was for us in the premortal sphere, an expression of how we valued exaltation, or circles, completions. For we saw God and chose to pursue the path that would lead us to becoming like Him. Yes, the path that would allow our spirits to progress along the course of light and truth and virtue. Now Lucifer has grown in his learning, and indeed he knows much of what is taught at schools. <clears throat> his intelligence in that respect is massive even beyond our comprehension. But his intelligence in the aspect of the most pure form of intelligence, namely that he would follow the most bright light, if you will, this is an area of intelligence wherein you and I, residents of this earth who continue in progression in characteristics resembling those which God possesses, far exceed that of Lucifer. Because of this progression, we have bodies. That is part of, our, uh, that is part of the progression. Lucifer never reached that point in progression. All with bodies have progressed further in eternity than has Lucifer or any of his other followers who do not have bodies. You see persons with bodies have power over those who do not, and this is because they are further along in their pursuit of intelligence. The damnation of a soul is like a river that has been ceased in its course by the making of a wall in its pathway. Damnation of a person comes when they refuse to continue onward and put a wall in their own path. No one puts this wall in but themselves, and it is a conscious act, and the consciousness of that action is one which far too many people are willing to admit. Which is to say, don't think that just because someone doesn't recognize that they're damning themselves doesn't mean that they are damning themselves. Or doesn't mean that they're not damning themselves. Now, who will hear more? Who will go on to eternity, choosing to seek and thus find the hidden things kept secret from before the foundation of the world? Who will meditate upon the scriptures after having read them? Who will allow themselves to be valuable enough to let themselves be taught? Who will not cease to search for understanding until it has been found in every instance? This is the type of character a person needs to possess in order to progress on to eternity. I ask it again, where is the person that is willing to leave father and mother? I ask it again, where is the person that is willing to leave father and mother and come follow me? Yea, I ask it, wife, friend, neighbor, and anything else. That may be damning their brains from progression that would otherwise flow smoothly without ris restraint. I'm not asking you to isolate yourselves, not to jump because the water isn't a perfect temperature. Do the jumping where the jumping is needed marriage, etc., and this in a context of you know, taking risks where needed, but be willing to leave the philosophies of the world behind. I would tell you a thousand times, 
Seek to understand the points of the gospel of God, which are, at present, unclear to your minds. Get the Spirit of God in you, and it will embolden you to not only act according to the needs of your present circumstances, but to peel your mind away from every learned thing you have heard, and to start fresh with God and the revelations recognized by the church and kingdom of God. I will tell you again, who will be with the Lord when night falls? Who will seek Him in the morning? Who will put aside a few material benefits in order to benefit his soul with meditation and searching of God's word and every other good book which does not contend against the gospel of God? Remember, the things pertaining to the gospel of God are those of greatest import. So here I say it. Searching is a key ingredient to exaltation, for no person can be saved in ignorance. If you love the prophet whom the spirit of true intelligence, the Holy Ghost, has led you to follow, even the leader of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, then seek to do as he, and let your mind expand. Let it reach the heavens and pass the riff-raft, floating, sectarial, or evil, etarian doctrines, which are a dime a dozen with sugar on top. No, don't be deceived by the offering of things to your belly, or to the corrupt belly of your mind. Be turned rather to heaven, the which is light and eternity and pure intelligence, the which cannot cease to inspire. I remind you that this search is exhausting, and though great progress can be made in a day, exaltation will only come to those who embrace these principles which are correct and the ones which will take you from <clears throat> the current step to the next daily. Yes, I tell you, daily embrace these principles in whatever maddened way you can, for this may appear to be a maddened search, or a crazed search, the level of concentration and devotion it demands of our lives. This is why no man has reached heaven who, has, who was attracted to mammon. Money has its proper place, and in the end, man will be damned without having provided for his own. But oh, the small place in the wedge of life that money occupies for the faithful. Judge no man, for ye hardly know what these things mean. Trust in the leaders of God's church. I will remind you that all things of progression and beginnings are to your pleasure for the having, so far as understanding of such things go, for the Holy Ghost is with you. That is the end of this lecture. <clears throat> this composition which I've created on the doctrine of exaltation, it is to be found at richardsonstudies.wordpress.com slash category slash exaltation dash theory.